So tonight's wild camp will be Northumberland. Absolutely stunning up here. One of the best bits is there's nobody comes here. Everyone's off at the lakes, the peaks, you know, uh, Wales, Snowdonia, wherever. And here we are in Northumberland. Absolutely cracking place. I've uh, picked my spot. I'm going to put the Fern 1 for its first proper run out. I'm here with Mark Outdoors. He's using a Nordisk Holland 2 lightweight in red. He's found his pitch down there. You need a pretty long pitch for that one because it's three and a half meter long tent. Where the Vern 2, I think it's 260, so I'm going in there nice and flat. I'll put the door facing in away from the camera, like that direction, because the wind is going to come from here, so I'd rather be end on. Um, but yeah, Scotland over that direction. The northeast coast is all in that direction. So we'll get set up and then we'll have a look at the tent once it's all set up. All nice and taut, all guidelines out. I've pegged out the centre points on the walls down here on all four. Nice and taut. Um, in all directions. It's a good looking tent. Um, honestly, really nice. And with the backdrop we've got. Absolutely stunning. Mark's using the Nordisk Holland 2 LW, which is an absolute palace of a tent. Massive, about three and a half meters long. Tunnel tent, um, huge interior and light as well. Uh, without the footprint, it's just under 1.5 kilograms all in. Put the footprint in, you had another 250, 300 grams but it is absolutely enormous inside. It's only, I think it's about one and a half meters wide, but it's three and a half meters long, meter interior space, cracking summer tent. It will stand up to pretty strong winds, so over towards Cheviot. Bit of snow still on the tops. I mean, there's, there's cloud cover, but it's nice and still, it's nice and dry. Occasionally the odd spot of wind, a uh, bit of odd spot of rain, just you know, little drips and drops, <laughs> nothing significant. Over that way is the northeast coast of England. You can see, You're heading over towards uh, Lindisfarne and everything over that direction, the wind farms and such. Over this way, just over there, and just over the tops, just over the tops of here, is Scotland. We're just inside England at the minute, but it's absolutely stunning here. We're in an old uh, Iron Age hill fort, and it's absolutely beautiful, picturesque. And this is why I like Northumberland because. It hasn't got the, uh, whilst it's not got the the big peaks of the Lake District, you know, it's not a million miles behind. I mean, the Cheviot, which is over that way, is I think it's either 840 or 860. It's still a good peak. Um, it's mostly rolling hills, big rolling hills. But it's just so remote. It's got some of the darkest skies in the UK, so when you get a clear night, your, your views of the stars is just unsurpassed. It's amazing. Um, and you hardly ever see anybody because everybody's down the lakes, the peaks, up in the Cairngorms, down in uh, Snowdonia, or yeah, with uh, however it's pronounced now. Um, apologies to any Welsh folk if I got that wrong, I probably did. But yeah, everyone's down those places and Dartmoor and whatnot, and hardly anybody comes up here, and I just think. On the one hand, it's a bit of a shame. On the other hand, uh, I'm more than happy that that's the case because if people aren't here, then you get a nice camp. People aren't leaving rubbish everywhere. I mean, you still get it. You still get it from time to time, but not as bad 
is some other places. It, it's relatively unspoiled. Um, so, the tent. I'm going to get my stuff inside. Um, I think I'll get a brew on and we'll see how it fares tonight. I mean, in fairness, the wind's not supposed to get up any more than about 10, 12 mile an hour, so it's not really a big test for the thing. But it should be coming from this direction. So I'll pitch that end in to where it's coming from. And we'll see what happens during the night. So it's not meant to rain till maybe the wee small hours in the morning, but it's, uh, yeah. So something about this as well, the, the footprint from Lucy Quinton um, arrived this morning. Um, so I've got that in there. What Norton have done is, for their footprint, they've used a, um, um, a quick release uh, buckle on each apex to fit the ground sheet in. Um, and it's all the female parts in the tent. So you need, the ground sheet has the mills attached to it. And the one that they've used is, um, yeah, it's kind of a specialist part. I've, I've got a million uh, quick release buckles and none of them fit. Um, it's Duralite, something like that's the name of the company that makes them. I have found them. Um, if you're not buying in bulk, they're, they're not the cheapest thing in the world, but I can get them and then I can just get them uh, attached to the footprint from Lucy and then we're good to go. I mean, that, that's a blatant thing to get you to buy their footprint, I guess. And I, I, I get it, I get it. Um, but yeah, so I'll get my stuff inside and then we'll have a look inside the tent once everything's in. We'll have a look and see what the, the, the headroom's like, sitting on the mat and, and whatnot, vestibule shape, because I have pegged them corner, them uh, midpoints out, then my vestibule should actually be bigger than the standard 65. Well, it is 65 in the centre, but as you're getting towards the apex, the, uh, foot and head end of the tent it'll be wider for longer because of pulling those out just ever so slightly so that's me all set up sleeping bag in there me pillow at the top backpack and all my other gear is all over in that corner and then we cook stuff food water bits and bobs poles and whatnot there little mat there I brought me uh, the chair with us as well today so it's Spat on a little bit, but then it stopped again. So if it if it stays off, then uh, we'll get the chair out and we'll sit outside. I've got a couple of little cans of uh, Captain Morgan Spice Rum and Coke just for this evening. The sun's starting to go down off in the distance. We might get a bit of a sunset if we're lucky. It doesn't really look like it on the video, but there's a couple of orangey bits developing, so we might actually get something. Halfway decent. We shall see. So I'm sat inside the new Vern One, the 2024. Uh, there's not a breath of wind outside. It's uh, it's lovely, a bit chilly, but nothing uh, nothing to write home about. Um, just looking at the space you've got. I mean, the head of me. I don't know if you can see there. The head of me sleeping bag and pillow. I've got maybe. 15, 20 centimetres above my head, and then at the base, you know, lying down, my feet are shy of the bottom. So, it's plenty of roomy tent. I mean, there's nations, I can't really see properly, I'll flip. There's absolutely nations of space at the side. I've got my rucksack and all my gear down the side of the, the sleeping bag. Um, I think I'll open the door so you can see how big the vestibule is. Oh, opened the wrong one. So this is the mesh anyway, um, if you can properly see it. Because you've got the option of opening the inner door. And Got it wrong again. That's it there. So, and the door comes back. Now, something about the door, um, and this is just personal preference. I mean, you can see the 
just how big the vestibule is. Absolutely massive. You know, I've got gear all the way through there. The boots at the top. I could have put my bag out there, but I prefer to have it in the tent if possible. Um, so you can see, you know, just how spacious the tent is. Um, it's just pretty vast. Crap camera angles. Um, I mean, other things to note, there's the vents at the bottom. Now, these, if you open these, go right down, and there's, you can see it there, the mesh. So you're not going to get any midges or insects in there. You've got your pocket here, washing line here. There's another pocket at the opposite end, another vent. There's a, a pocket just behind the door there. There's one just behind the other door. Uh, and there's two small triangular ones halfway up the tent on the inside. Um, so yeah, the, the, there's a ton of space sitting in the tent. If you get into the apex, I've got, you know, right, right in the dead center, I've probably got maybe three centimeters, two centimeters above my head. And I'm six foot, uh, 183 centimeters. So, you know, the, the, and I'm sat on my mat as well. It, it's worth mentioning that I'm sat on my mat. So the, the, the is, it's a very roomy tent. Um, in terms of the door, the one thing I would have preferred to see is a tea door. That's a personal preference. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with this door. There really isn't. It's, uh, it works well. Just my personal preference is a tea door. I just think it gives you more options, you know, open one side, open the other side, open both. Um, I mean, a couple of years ago, I had a Nature Hike Cloud Pig 2, and I had the T-door version. They switched to an oval door, and they had nothing but problems. I'm not saying this is going to have problems. It may, it may not. But my view is that zips, as a general rule, like to be straight. Um... There's more can go wrong with the curved zip. They are better than they used to be, to be fair. But a straight zip fails far less often. Now, this could go forever and never fail. That, that's fine. But as I say, from, from a personal perspective, I do much prefer a T-zip. The Sulo has a T-zip. There's a number of tents do, and as I say, I just like them more. But the oval zip uh, in this, the, the door is absolutely enormous. And it allows you access easily to both outer doors. Um, I've opened the top of both outer doors, only about six, seven inches maybe. Um, and those are man inches. So it could be like a foot. It could be uh, three inches. But yeah, so I've opened the top of them just for a bit more ventilation. Um... But like I say, I'm probably going to have condensation simply because tonight up on the hill, it's very cold. Um, I, I don't know what the temperature is, but they take me down jacket off and feel it instantly. And there's no wind, so the air's not moving about. Thankfully, there's no clag, so it, it, it's a clear night. I've, I've got some photographs I've taken. Um, and yes, there's a little bit of cloud cover, but it's very, very clear see all the way to the coast in one direction, see over the hills to Scotland in another. So, you know, it, it's an absolutely stunning night in fairness. Not the best test for the tent. If, if you know, you want to test the, um, how it stands up against the weather. But to be honest with you, I'm, I'm quite happy that it's a nice calm night. I mean, things could change overnight in, in Northumberland and, you know, it's the same script as in Scotland. If you don't like the weather, just hang about for half an hour. It will change. So there's every chance it could uh, change overnight. That's just standard. But th there's a part of us that's quite happy that it's quite calm and nice night because this means I can spend tonight familiarising myself with everything about the tent. Um, if you're constantly having to battle the elements on your first night out, it makes it difficult for you to get used to things. And I don't know if other people are the same, but for me, when, when I come out camping... I like to be able to figure out where I put things um, so then the next time I come out, 
I've got me sort of familiar places. Maybe it's just my OCD or I'm on the spectrum or something. I don't know. But yeah, so for me, everything lives in a place, in a, in a tent. And so tonight I'm figuring out where the best place to put things is that works for me. There's plenty, plenty of storage options, plenty of room. So, it, you know, it's not difficult. Um, but once I've got it sourced and then, you know, I'll go outside in a little bit, double check all the guy out. It's not that they're going to move because, like I say, there's no wind at all to speak of. Um, but yeah, it we'll call it a, a familiarization first time out. Hopefully in the coming weeks, I mean, I'm, I'm going back to, I work in Europe three weeks out of every six so and I go back out there on um, Wednesday. So I won't get a chance to get out this again for at least another sort of three, four weeks. So hopefully when I come back, I can get some, I can get it camped in some more challenging conditions to give it a real run out. Because like I say, we want to, well, I want to see just how well it stands up in comparison to Sulo. Now, I had a message on, on my previous video from, um, Felman Dave, he's keen on maybe getting out together um, in windy, claggy conditions uh, with the Sulo and the Vern 1. I don't know if Dave's got a Sulo, but he's definitely got the Vern 1, the new Vern 1. So it might be a case of we can get out together in both tents and then we can do a side-by-side -side comparison in conditions because all I've done is a side-by-side -side in my back garden, in fairness, which isn't isn't a anyway a test that was more just a comparison but it would be it would be very interesting to, to get them out side by side so you're, you're measuring them against each other in identical conditions you know you're both facing the same challenge so um I, i'd quite like to do that i think that'd be a good idea tonight i'm out with a pal um mark outdoors i'll put a link in his description for his channel he has some really good reviews um and he gets out in some really nice places in Northumberland, the, the the peaks, the lakes, all over the place, really. Um, he's a lad that lives not too far from me, um, gets out regular. And I, I was out with him um, in Northumberland again a couple of weeks ago. Um, and that was a really nice count with really clear skies. The, the, the visibility of the stars was just next level. Uh, tonight we haven't got that, unfortunately. But Mark's out. He's... I've loaned him my um, Nordisk Halland 2 uh, lightweight. Um, he was going to come in his Lanshan. Uh, he has just bought a new tent, which he's going to be reviewing in a few weeks' time. The name of it escapes me, but it's a, it's an ultralight trekking tent. Um, I think it's along a similar lines as a, a Durst Next Mid, that kind of a tent, but um, I don't know. I haven't seen it. Um but he is going to be getting out in that shortly. He was going to bring out his lanchan. And I says, well, look, do you want to give a, a run out to the Holland? I've, I've only been out, actually out in it once. I bought it as a summer tent because it's, without a footprint, it's um, about just under 1.5 kilograms. And it's an absolute palace of a tent. It's massive. Three and a half metres long, about one and a half metres wide. It's a genuine two-man tent. And when I did have it out the one time, it was in all, approaching 50 mile an hour wind. So I know it's a good tent. But that really is my summer tent. Um, and it's also, because it's so long, it's one of them where I kind of need to know where I'm going. Like, I've been before and I know how big the pitch is because at three and a half metres, you can sometimes be limited by where you can put it. With this tent, the, the Vern 1, I think it's 2.6 metres, so it's almost a full metre shorter. So you, your options for finding pitches is, like, much easier. Um... The Sulo, again, is slightly shorter, so that gives you even more. Um, but I found a really nice pitch here. Uh, more than happy. It's pretty flat, to be fair. Maybe a slight lean towards the vestibule, but nothing significant. Um, but, yeah, so, you know, in the next few weeks and months, I'll hopefully get a chance to get out uh, with Felm and Dave. Uh, we can do the side-by-side -side comparison, and it just gives us a bit more information about how this stacks up of the, the, the North End Vern 1, how it stacks up against the Hilleberg Sulo. Because that's the one that, you know, pretty much everybody that's bought the Vern 1 is looking at it as a, a contender to the Sulo. Um, 
the structure is a very similar, but I mean, the pole layout is different. But it's, again, it's a three pole tent. It does have a lot more room inside. It has more ventilation options. Um, I mean, it's, it's more room in every direction, to be fair. Uh, the height, apparently not so much. I mean, but as I say, I can sit up on my mat and I'm six foot. So, you know, you're not restricted by any stretch of the imagination. If you're a lot taller, then your head's going to be brushing against the top, but mine isn't. Um, somebody commented uh, yesterday or the other day saying that they're six foot three, so is it going to be a problem? They still don't know. Well, now I'm in it, sat on my mat. If I go up, bolt up right and reach up, then I can rub my head on the top, but it's not pushing it up to the, the fly sheet. Sitting normally, my head's not touching it. So it's, I think there's room. I mean, obviously the entrance is a couple of centimetres lower, um, and the outer door with the canopy on that side is a little bit lower. It's about 90 centimetres, I think. On the other side, where you haven't got the canopy, you've got the full length of the door. So you, you've actually got to the top of the fly. You, you've got more room to get out that side. So first impressions, like out on a, an actual camp, easy to put up, easy to find a pitch because it's not oversized. And yet inside is very roomy. It is a lot more roomy than the Sulo. So it beats the Sulo on interior space. Weight, as I mentioned in the other video, not a million miles different. Um, it's wider inside, the vestibule's bigger inside. The materials, they look, if, if you've had a Sulo, it looks very much like a Sulo inside, in the sense that the outer skin is a dark green and it's not, it's slightly lighter than the Sulo. The inner, it's that yellow that Hilleberg uses, the same yellow. Um, but yeah, really impressed with this tent, to be fair. Really happy with it. Um, all that remains is for us to, to go out in nastier conditions so I can actually put it up against the Sulo and I'll be in a better position to see whether it is a proper challenger to the Sulo, whether it's stronger, whether it's more robust. I mean, I have to say, when I put it up in the garden, I only put the six pegs on the apex points of the fly sheet. I didn't peg the guy lines out. Today, I've pegged it out with the guy lines, and this thing is like a tank. It really is. Like, it doesn't move anywhere. Um, when you get hold of the poles and try and give it a shake, it literally just laughs at you. Um, it is a very, very well put together tent, I have to say. I haven't, I haven't noticed any quality control issues if you like i did notice with the pole where it goes in the sleeve over at this far side the outer sleeve isn't stitched around all three sides at the bottom it's stitched around two and a bit so if, when you're putting the pole in if you pull it if you don't put it right to the outer corner it actually came through um and stuck out the bottom now i don't know if that's the way it should be but as i say the stitching if, if you imagine um this is the cup. It's stitched around this side and this side and a bit of that side, but not all the way up. So when it slides in, if it goes to this side, it can pop through the bottom. Now, I don't know if that is a quality control issue. I, I might have to send an email to, to Norton and ask, but if you, if you, where you've got the, the cup, if you move it to the outside of there, it sits perfectly happily doesn't move in the slightest it, it's not trying to jump its way out or anything like that so it doesn't affect the pitch of the tent as long as you make sure it's seated in that the outer corner if you like um but yeah that, that's the only thing like there's literally nothing i haven't i, I think it was andrew park he, he found some problem with a, a bit of the stitching on the vent um where the the, the sewing machine had ran off the side or something like that um I think that's maybe been a one-off, possibly. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what anyone else's uh, impressions are. But as I say, I've, I've had a good look inside the tent all the way around, and I can't see anything that stands out. Um, more than more than happy with this tent, especially given the, the, the price. Like you say, you, you cannot... All that remains is to see how it stands up in crap conditions like really bad conditions and if it stands up as i think it'll stand up and i'm confident that it will to be fair i think sulo really does have a proper challenge on its hands you know i don't think that's in doubt um 
we just have to wait and see on another camp in worse conditions. Uh, but yeah, first impressions out in the field, really happy with it. You know, more than happy with it. Uh, definitely be using this a lot more, I think. So yeah, just woke up. It's about five past seven. Um, had a really good night's sleep. The, looking at the tent, there's no condensation to speak of at all. Well, tiny little bit, but like nothing. It's not even beading on the surface, as you can see. Literally no. There's dew on the outside, which you can see through. But, uh, right, so time to get a brew on and uh, have some breakfast. Um, I'll just chill for about five, ten minutes. When I do that, then I'll start packing away. Um, Cracking night's sleep. The, the wind's picked up a little bit this morning, but it's still nothing significant. It's it's probably six, seven mile an hour, something like that. Maybe a little bit more. But um, yeah, absolutely cracking night's sleep. Really impressed with this tent. As I say, it's, um, it needs a proper test. Uh, this isn't been a, a real test of it. I mean, like I say, the wind's picking up a little bit, but. I need to get it out in a proper good weather, you know, the really spicy stuff. But yes, so I'm well, more than happy with how this was last night. A really comfortable night's sleep. Got the, the stove on to make a brew. Um, you can see space between me and the, the pot. And you've got a ton of room away from the tent, so you, you, you know, you're no danger of. Uh, Burning the tent with the stove. Like I say, the, this vestibule is massive. Absolutely enormous. So I quite like that. So there's some tents are always in fear a little bit of uh, having the stove too close, but you've got between the inner here and the stove is maybe about 20 centimetres. Then between the stove and the wall of the tent is a good 30 centimetres. So tons of space. Absolutely bang on. Got the top of the door open there for the ventilation. And uh, time for a coffee. We've got uh, smashed up Weetabix with milk, milk powder. Just add the water to that, mix that up. Nice hot, it's a lot like porridge when you do it like that. And we've got a little sachet of raspberry jam and a one of peanut butter and a loaded brownie. The, um, I get these bags off Amazon just mylar bags and I've got a heat sealer the heat sealer was about 20 quid I think the bags you you get like I think it's 50 for a few quid it's not expensive and I do this actually as a jam and peanut butter I know you can get the little um, the little pots of jam the um, individual portions of jam but um, peanut butter I've yet to find any ordinary peanut butter sachets so I make my own rather than carrying a jar of peanut butter up um, and then I can just you know there both of them I do the same with oats as well I'll occasionally bring oats mixed with a bit of uh, I think it's called Nido or Nido uh, whole milk powder made by Nestle and again you can get the the milk powder on Amazon it's it's about a tenner for half a kilo or something and that makes loads of these um, so that's my breakfast, and I just find it really convenient just to make these myself. Put the hot water straight into them, or uh, as I had with me my dinner last night, if you put something, uh, I don't know, chicken curry or, or you know chili, whatever you whatever you want to put in these things, even a tin of sausage and beans, a full one will go in there with plenty of room. And then you can actually boil that in the water as well. Just the same as like the expedition foods or the. Um, the various other ones, but I mean that there, it's like four Weetabix and a couple of spoon, tablespoons of um, whole milk powder and as I say me, me two little sashes of peanut butter so like, that breakfast probably cost us I don't know, pound fifty or something even a meal last night like just for quickness, I, as I was coming out of the house, I, I put a tin of beans and sausages into one of these 
And so you're looking at, again, you're probably looking at about a pound. Saves you an absolute bomb on, on the actual meals. I mean, you can do other stuff. You buy those sachets of dolmi or pasta with, um, and the sachets of sauce, you can just boot them in there. But you can actually just boil them bags as well. Um, other things, I've, I've done it where I've put noodles in these or um, bring sort of like a curry sauce or something. Like, you can buy Sharwood's different curry sauce sachets and heat one of them up, put it in there with some rice, and it's that sort of microwave boiling the bag rice, which again, with that, you add a tablespoon of hot water, put it in the, the stove, heat them up, and your rice is done. It's bang on. Um, so many ways you can do camping foods without having to spend four, five, six quid on the... The pre-prepared one, as long as you prepare to spend a little bit of time making them, but and then you can have whatever you want without any added nonsense that maybe isn't your cup of tea. Um, yeah, have it exactly as you like. You make all kinds of stuff in these, and you can either do dehydrated stuff. I mean, you can even get those like um, what are they called? Mug shots, pasta things. Bang them in, and then you can bring a little bag of something chopped up. Uh, some meat or something, chicken, whatever. Box that in with your curry noodles or whatever, and you've you've got a, a better meal than just noodles because you've a bit of pork thing in there as well. But yeah, as I say, it was about twenty quid for the the heat sealer, and then these bags you get like fifty for a few quid. These you get a couple of hundred, I think, a few quid, and they're easy done. You just fill them at one end, heat seal the bottom end, and that's it done. So that's breakfast. Up, about to set off, and as always, that's where I was pitched right there. Really good chance, as it should be.